Well, in this video, I'm going to uh, attempt to replace the laser pickup on a Denon 2930 DVD player. I bought this player a few years back, uh, having first discovered DVD audios. It will play, uh, as well as DVDs, it plays DVD audio and Super Audio CD and, of course, CDs. And uh, I didn't know it, but at the time I discovered DVD audio, uh, it had peaked and uh, the public weren't really interested. So I only had about a year of purchasing discs, I managed to get about 30. And then the market dried up. Uh, so I started also playing Super Audio CDs. And during that first year, uh, a notorious problem apparently, uh, the laser pickup on this machine broke. It just wouldn't. It would skip, it would stall, it would freeze, all sorts of things. So um, that was under warranty and it went back to Denon and they replaced it. I'm just going to take this to pieces. I've already taken the, uh, the screws out etc. Uh, while I'm talking. And uh, when, when the, the new laser pickup went in it was fine for a short while. Played for another year or so and then it started to become problematic again and eventually it wouldn't play Super Audio CDs. It continued to play DVD audios for a while, uh, but no Super Audio CDs. And then after another few months it stopped playing just about anything. So it's been disconnected from my, my home theatre system and, sh and shoved up in a bedroom out of, out of sight for a few years. And I was going to throw it away, but voila! It suddenly occurred to me, maybe I can do something about this. Um, so having tried to, to make the adjustments on the, uh, the pickup, I discovered eventually that there are, there are two um, Allen key screws in here, I'll show you them in detail in a moment, which you can twiddle with. And of course it's hit and miss, there's no manual you, you, that you can get hold of for this, and also I don't have any test equipment such as, as an oscilloscope. So uh, I tried messing about, but uh, to no avail. It simply uh, would not work. And then it suddenly occurred to me, maybe I can do something about this before I actually throw it in the bin because, well, this, is, this, is, uh, this was uh, over $2,000 here in Australia. So it's not a cheap piece of kit. And lo and behold, on eBay from the UK, I managed to find a replacement laser part. Here, that's the box. Here's the bit. Um, this is for the 2930CI. I've never really discovered what the CI stands for, so I'm hoping it's going to work with this 2930 player, which doesn't seem to have the CI subscript added to it. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is plug it in. Now, of course, uh, you'll see in the disclaimers at the start of this video, uh, don't mess this stuff open like this when it's connected to the mains, unless you really do know what you're doing. Uh, I uh, disclaim any responsibility for you being fried or electrocuted or shocked in any way. And I'm just to switch this on and with a bit of luck <coughs> I turn it around you'll see the logo there and you can see the laser pickup now I've removed the, the top bits um, that's what I'm going to replace with the, the new part here uh, but just to show you what happens, I'll put a simple old CD in I've got, a cheapy, and you'll see that um, what it does is, uh, oops, now that was a bad mistake, get that out again. Of course the thing actually won't go round unless this cover's in place here. Shove that back on like that without without the screws. The screws in there, which I took out earlier on. And we'll put the DV, uh, the CD rather back in. And voila! With a bit of luck, it should spin. It does spin. That's something. Uh, it'll say loading here, and it will struggle. Can you hear that? That's the laser pickup attempting to uh, to find a track. Now I don't know, I've not been able to find out enough about this to be certain as to what's going on. 
but I came to the conclusion after messing about with these adjusting screws that there's nothing that I was going to be able to do um, to get this to, uh, to work. And therefore it seemed that a possible solution was the laser pickup itself was faulty. I don't know that. Um, this is a gamble. Um, the pickup I bought from eBay from the UK supplier was uh, 11 pounds something. Uh, by the time it got to me in Australia, it cost me $30. And uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And this whole kit effectively goes in the bin. All I'm really doing this for, I've got other sources to, for my DVD audios and, and everything else. And of course, most stuff I play on the Blu-ray player now. Um, but what I can't play is Super Audio CDs. And uh, uh, if this fails, then it fails. But if it works, great. I can use it to play my Super Audio, audio CDs on. So we'll pull this back here. I'm going to switch it back off again. Uh, note again the dangers of doing this. Uh, here's your mains. Uh, here's the mains cable. Uh, it com comes through a fuse, which you can perhaps just see there. And that's live. Even when I switch this off, uh, that side of the switch is live. So um, you really shouldn't mess about with it like that. However, because what we need to do is to get at this laser assembly, I'm just going to switch it back on so I can open the drawer because I need to extract this this thing and I'm going to I'll get up and move the camera in a moment so that uh, we can see what's going on. Once that's open I can switch off <laughs> well I thought I could switch off the system it's not going to let me try again perhaps if I switch it off at the, at the switch open please Thank you very much. And I'll just switch the switch off. And we're open. And it will stay open. And as a safeguard, I am now going to pull out the mains connector. Of course, you will be aware that there are capacitors and things in these machines. And there could still be a residual charge. So you should be still extremely careful uh, in doing what you're doing. OK, I'm going to uh, zoom the camera in on there. So here's the, uh, the laser assembly. Here are the Allen keys. Can you see those? Yep. <clears throat> Here are the Allen keys that can be used to adjust the, uh, these rods up and down, which just changes the orientation of the, uh, the lens. Um, and it's a good idea to, to screw those all the way in with an Allen, Allen uh, key uh, in order to see when they seat and then screw them uh, and count the turns so that you know exactly where they were because as I say when we get the new pickup in here this will be trial and error and uh, it's fingers crossed all the way basically so uh, the very least one can do is to set these screws back to their original setting I'm not sure whether I, in fact I have to loosen those it looks to me like I take these two screws out here uh, of course this ribbon cable has to come off and I can't for the moment see how that happens whether you just pull it or whether it clips out I've looked at the new part through the bag I'm not taking this out of the bag yet uh, because um, of static considerations there's a solar blob here which has to be desoldered. Uh, it's a static safety precaution, and I'm going to need to earth myself with a wristband when I do that. And if you look at this, the actual solder blob goes over here, and it shorts out those three uh, three shoulder three uh, solder tabs. And uh, I'm nervous about that. I've uh, I've never used a desoldering pump before. I've just been practicing on a piece of circuit board and uh, I console myself for the fact that this was only 30 bucks and if, it, if I bugger it up, I bugger it up. So I think what we're going to do next is take these screws out here and see if that means I can slide this laser beam, laser beam off. Hmm. 
Okay, that's one out, I think. Two out, ah. Uh -huh. Those are screws. Oh, that's a long screw. Oh, they're both long screws. Okay. There's the adjusting Allen keys. And then. I don't know whether this cog will be important on how it goes back on this ratchet. I imagine it will. I can always re look at this bit of video just to check the exact position. But just as a rough guide, there's a marker here which is more or less lined up with that, but that's just very approximate. And then. Aha, so I can slide that out. If I pull it past the stop there. Okay. Whoa! Damn. He says. Ah. Even worse, dropping bits all over the place. Well, these rods seem to be the same both ends. But anyway, I'll put them down so I know that that's the top. And then the question is how does that come off okay it just pulls it just it just pulls hopefully it'll go back in again on the new one I've got to find out what I dropped which uh, might be a bit of a nuisance can't see where it's gone I'll switch the video off while I have a, a route around for that well, I had to pick that up and give it a good shake, and lo and behold, uh, the rod rolled out, <coughs> and uh, this is the, the left one, uh, and uh, it's slightly shorter than the right one. So, they've got to go back the right way around, and also, slightly more worrying is, that's my blue tack, a little spring was rolling around in the bottom which has come off something to do with uh, the rod and I'm hoping, ah oh, now then, I've only just seen that, there's the rack and there's a spring on there, I assume the other spring will go also, also somehow on there uh, not see offhand where it might be for the moment. I can't. That that one sits on a little um, a little peg. It's come off now. Both springs look identical. No, they're not actually. The one that's come off that peg is finer. Ah, oh, solution. This is the other bit that came off. And uh, there's a spring in there. So the other spring obviously goes obviously goes in there. We'll do that while we remember which spring it is. Just do it. There we go. So two springs there. One and two. Okay. So we're all ready now to uh, put in the new bit. Uh, here it is. And it certainly does look to be absolutely identical. So fingers crossed. Uh, and as I pointed out earlier on, we have got to desolder this blob, which means a wristband and a workbench with a soldering iron and a clamp. And uh, I am slightly nervous about doing this. So let's see how we get on. <laughs> 